What is going on ladies and gentlemen, Randy here with RTS Mobile Gaming, bringing you an absolutely phenomenal video today. In today's video, we are playing the Lord of the Rings Rise to War, and we're going to be doing a little bit of PvP with our phenomenal uh, characters here. We've got Gorbag, who's moving over to this tile. we got Lurts that just moved into this location. We're going to go ahead and hit Black in the face. Shout out to SPQR Black, one of my main guys. I love you long time. Main guys over here on the Variog faction at Fight Club. Here we go. We're going to do a dual attack. We're going to hit uh, Black with Lurts. We're going to hit uh, Radagast here. Shout out to Radagast with Gorbag. And we're going to see what happens. I don't know what's going to happen, who's going to win, who's going to lose. But we'll find out in the next minute. Ladies and gentlemen, get excited. We also have some very unique PvP coming up later this weekend. We'll be doing a live stream either tonight or tomorrow. I don't know which yet. I've got some errands to run with the wife so she doesn't murder me, at which point, after which, I will be doing some streaming. Um, what we have is a great opportunity for some amazing PvP. I'm going to showcase a Respect Level 25 gore bag with some maxed out specialty gear uh, from my good friend CC Master. Ah, oh, Lurtz taking a loss. Lurtz is taking a loss. Oh my goodness. There goes Lurtz. Lurch down to Haldir, guys. Oh my goodness. What is this? All right. So what do we do? What happened? I should have dominated his units. So we got to see what happened here. Because clearly something happened. And I don't, <laughs> I don't know what. Oh, uh, yes. Because his sentinels, I mean, his sharpshooters are so squishy. With 19 defense and 32 HP, Lurch should have completely blasted through and shredded them into ribbons. All right. So the question is, how much damage did they get off in the first two rounds with their bonuses combined with Haldir's bonuses? And was that enough? And I think it was. Let's find out. Oh, and then we have a close draw in my favor. Well, not quite too, not, not, not too close, but we have a draw in my favor against Radagast. Good fight. Radagast, Gimli. Very, very nice. Gimli versus Gorbag, ladies and gentlemen. Fairly uh, even fight there. Taking the win on that. Yeah, the Bjornings are just disappointing. I have not been a fan of the Bjornings yet in this game. I've tried them a few times. They just have never really performed. Which you can see here. Don't really have a lot of damage output. Um, let me go ahead and pull Gorbag back so I can refill him. Okay, let's take a look at that alerts report again. Because this is interesting. I want to see what happened. Um, so, alright, so here's how Haldir works, right? And he has similar gear to my alerts, maybe a slightly better gear than my alerts. Um, definitely a little bit better gear. But overall, Haldir works uh, similar to, to Celeborn in that he has the guide ability, which gives him an enormous amount of damage for his units in the first two rounds, as well as stun immunity. He also has the Respect 5 tree, the Galadrim, which gives more bonus damage to his ranged units modified by his speed stat. So with a strong amount of speed, you can see an enormous amount of damage for your ranged units, okay? That combines with Fortify, which reduces the physical damage he receives when he's attacked, which is probably one of his saving graces here. Probably one of the reasons he was able to beat my alerts so soundly is because he had this Fortify, so he's already reducing the physical damage he receives by uh, 18%. And I think it's 17.5%. It just rounds up, Okay. Then we have the Sylvan Elf for a little bit of commander damage here, combined with Forest Agility, which gives his allied range units a chance to double strike and a little bit of beast healing, uh, maybe for his great beast. We'll see if that what that healing looked like. And he did get out about 19,000 healing, so that is a strong amount of healing on the great beast. Let's take a look at how this played out. This is exciting. I was not expecting Lurts to get dominated like this, so this is really exciting for me. I have an R10 Haldir that, I, uh, that I'm ready to level up. I just haven't leveled him up yet this season. So I may, uh, I may copy portions of this build from Black. Shout out to you, Black. Great work. All right, so check this out. Here's what we're looking at, guys. 45% bonus damage, okay? <laughs> for the first two rounds, an additional 31.8 bonus damage for the entire fight for Sharpshooter. So now we're looking at about 77% uh, 
uh, bonus damage to the sharpshooters. Sharpshooters, uh, as you guys probably already know, gain an additional 40% bonus damage in the first two rounds. So now we're up at somewhere around 117% uh, bonus damage on the sharpshooters with a damage range increased by his gear by 5. So let's call this average damage at 26, right? So now we're looking at, check this out. Now we're looking at 26 times 1 point, uh, times 2.17. We're looking at a damage range for the first two fights, guys, averaging at about 56 damage per hit. That is enormous. That is significantly, significantly higher than Sentinels, who have, the, who have their damage range at uh, whatever, 30, 32, 33, with this type of gear. So, um, and of course, they would gain the bonuses as well. So, the conversation has always been, are sharpshooters bonus damage in the first two rounds worth it because they deal massively less damage than sentinels later in the fight, but they do out damage them significantly in the first two rounds. It looks like here it paid off. So let's see how much damage his guys did in the first two rounds. My alerts hitting the great beasts with all of his abilities and then he attacks the sharpshooters fortunately. So I did take a little bit of damage off the sharpshooters there. But most of my uh, most of my burst went onto the great beasts, and of course we know that they're going to get a lot of healing. All right. Uh, okay. What am I? Who am I? My ram riders. I'm just taking a look here. The raiders attacked the great beasts. The ram riders attacked the great beasts and gave them a defense debuff. Uh, oh my goodness, ladies and gentlemen, look at this double strike from the sharpshooters. Not only did he gain a massive amount of damage in the first two rounds, he did trigger one of his 20% chance to get a double strike. So he has now dealt over 70,000 damage to my guardians, which are massively tanky units, right? These guys are tanky. They are no joke. They have enormously high defense. At 113 defense, you're looking at just about... Uh, you're looking at just about uh, maxed out at the 70 to 74 percent damage mitigation range. Um, so it's very impressive to see that uh, amount of damage come through on the guardians because these guys are tanky. 100 and uh, 100, you know 110 plus defense. Very impressive. Going into round two, let's take a look at that. Lurts hitting the great beasts again here in round two. <clears throat> I want to see that. I want to see that 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 the uh, the uh, sharpshooter damage. Here, here it is. So here in round two, the sharpshooters gain an additional twenty percent damage output from the wild yell from the great beasts, putting their new damage. Tick on the Ram Riders up at 36,700. Now we're going to see a steep drop off in their damage going into round three, but that's okay because they have now dealt over 100,000 damage in the first two rounds, which is fairly impressive. Lurts now is attacking with an uh, enormous amount. He's lost about a third of his command now, so his actual damage output for his abilities is going to be reduced pretty significantly. As you know, uh, physical damage is tied uh, is tied to the command. So the sharpshooters attacking no longer hitting for thirty six thousand damage, but they're still hitting for twenty four k here in round three. Very impressive to see that. Uh, I I I am impressed. I do like this. I don't. What I don't know is. What I don't know is. Are the sharpshooters worth it? versus using sentinels so what we, we calculated their average damage at uh 56 right so what would the sentinels damage be at plus five let's take a look so i'm not just giving you fake information do i have some i don't even have sentinels in this guy hang on i don't have sentinels on that guy let me look on my other account here real quick and just see what the sentinels are oh my goodness okay 
Do I even have sentinels on this guy? Who do I have sentinels on? Oh my god. I don't even know if I have a sentinel anywhere. I'm going to find the sentinel, guys. We're going off on a tangent here. But I would really like to find a sentinel uh, for these reports. <laughs> Just bear with me for like for like 10 seconds. All right, we're going to find one. I don't know. I don't know what the sentinels are at. I don't have them unlocked. Dang it. Ugh. I think they're at 32 to 33, okay? Let's just call it 32 average. Okay, for the sake of this discussion, let's call it 32 average damage for the Sentinels, okay? They're going to now gain plus 5, which is going to put their damage range up at, we have 32 plus 5, 37 damage range there. And now we're going to multiply that by the same amount minus 40%. So instead of 117 bonus, it's going to be the 77 bonus, right? times uh, 1.77 so here's the deal the sentinels even with the 40 percent damage bonus to uh to to his units at 32 average uh 32 average damage range base range and i i, I don't remember if that's it i hopefully i'm not goofing that too much but if their average damage range is 32 then their damage output is actually going to be about 15% higher up in the 63 to 65 range compared to these uh, to the sharpshooters who are averaging at 56. Okay, so that's the difference. That is a big a big difference. Um, so Black, I would love to see you try this build with Sentinels instead of the sharpshooters, and let me know how that goes next. Okay, so all right, guys, thanks for watching. What an interesting video today. I expected to do pretty well in this fight because I'm fighting with very tanky units. I have armor debuffs, and I'm fighting against units that have 19 defense. And somehow, he was able to prevail with more than half of his march alive. So phenomenal damage output from the sharpshooters. Um... I really hope I'm not goofing that sentinel damage range. So if I'm wrong on the 32 sentinel damage range, which is entirely possible, I feel like that's pretty high. Maybe they're in the high 20s. I don't have any sentinels to look at to tell you what it really is. So depending on where that actually is, their, their damage could be, could be a little bit less. We'll have to take a look, okay? But anyways, thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I love you a long time. Stay tuned for some uh, great streams and stuff this weekend. Randy out.